Well, a day after Iran defiantly blows off the U.N. deadline to stop enriching uranium, a former Iranian leader arrived in the United States. Mohammad Khatami is in Chicago preparing to speak to the Islamic Society of North America. He entered the U.S. on a visa granted by the State Department. Joining us to talk about it is Hossein Ibish, executive director of the Foundation for Arab American Leadership, and Raymond Tanter, former senior staff member of the National Security Council. Gentlemen, thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you. Hussein, let me begin with sure. you. Obviously, when Khatami was president in Iran uh, just a short while ago, mm -hmm. uh, Bush included Iran in the axis of evil. Right. So why should he be allowed to enter the U.S.? Well, because you need to talk to people you don't get along with. We need to talk to uh, states that we have problems with. There's this outstanding nuclear issue. Obviously, there's not enough dialogue between the United States and Iran. Now, I'm afraid that Khatami is not going to be entrusted by the new government of Ahmadinejad and the hardliners uh, you know, to negotiate even in a back-channel way with the United States. But I think, you know, you've got to start the conversation somewhere. What we need to do and what we have not done with Iran is <clears throat> to sit down with them and talk seriously about our security concerns, their security concerns, and, and try to reach, uh, you know, an overall rapprochement. But this policy we have, uh, where we don't talk to anyone we don't like, we don't talk to our enemies, so we don't talk to Iran or Syria or uh, North Korea, except in a multilateral setting or, you know, a long list of people is a very wrong-headed policy because if you don't talk, you leave yourself only with confrontation and in the end only with, with warfare. Raymond, frankly. we know that Katami uh, may meet with Jimmy Carter. He is also going to the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., as well as giving this speech in Chicago. Is open dialogue a good thing? Could bridges be built? Amy, absolutely not. Not with this man. In fact, by giving him a visa to visit the United States, this is an example of appeasing the Ayatollahs and suppressing democracy. Uh, the crown prince of Bahrain said it all when he said that um, Khamenei, the religious leader, the supreme leader, he's in charge of religion and terror. Uh, Rafsanjani, a former president of Iran, he is a businessman, corrupt, all, uh, corrupt uh, as he is. He's in charge of business and terror. And what about President Khatami? Well, President Khatami is in charge of moderation and terror, Amy. So this is the wrong move. Letting this man come to the National Cathedral, he's going to visit Monticello, all of the symbols of American democracy by someone who presides over oppression in Iran. He uh, presides over the nuclear fuel enrichment process in Iran from 1997 to 2005. And finally, Amy, he also allowed Al-Qaeda members to come into come in through Iran into the United States for 9-11, Amy. Hussein, what do you say yeah. to the people who say, when we, when we have this man over, especially yeah. at this time where we've got obviously right. incredible uh, nuclear tensions right now, we're threatening uh, restrictions, we're, we're threatening uh, both financial yeah. and political restrictions here on, on Iran. Does this weaken our hand no, to let a former a... leader uh, come here, tour the area, no, and no. as Raymond mentioned, uh, visit very significant spots in the United yeah, it States. Doesn't, doesn't weaken our Look, uh, the United States is not a small power. The United States should act with confidence. It should act boldly. But it should not close. It should not behave like a child and put its fingers in its ear and start singing la, 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 la. It should talk to its opponents. It should talk to the countries that it has a problem with. I mean, look, you have really, in the end, two alternatives. Either you can make a deal with countries you have a problem with. And we talked to the Soviet Union for decades. We talked to China for decades. We have a long history until recently of talking to our rivals our opponents and even our enemies short of warfare now if you don't do that you're you're really uh, what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a situation where you can only ratchet up confrontation you can only go towards warfare I don't know why mr. Tanter wants a, a confrontation with Iran that's uh, ultimately if you don't make a deal going to lead to warfare I don't know if he wants another war or not but he's laying out a prescription for warfare so I say you have to have uh, a serious uh, dialogue with uh, with your enemies and your opponents, as we have done traditionally in the past, hope to make a deal so that you don't have further violence and further confrontation. Raymond, I know you want to speak to that, and I'll let you. Do you think there's any benefit at all to having Katami come to the United States? Not at all, Amy. And let me give you an, a quick anecdote. Uh, a scorpion's trying to cross the Jordan River. Scorpion gets on the frog's back, and the frog said, let's have a dialogue. Talk about it. Scorpion says, uh, look, you know, we don't have to talk. He said, I'm not going to sting you. Halfway through the river, halfway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog. 
He said, and the frog says, why did you do that? He said, well, we had a dialogue. Scorpions sting by definition, by their very nature. The regime in Tehran exports his revolution because that's his ideological predisposition. There's nothing to talk about with the government of Iran. What are you going to talk about? The al-Qaeda people that you no, I, asked hey, look, to come? I, I think you can definitely uh, Mr. make Hibish, it I hadn't finished there, sir. I'm sorry. I'll just go finish ahead. right, right yeah, here. Al-Qaeda members are there. The United States talked with the government of Iran. The United States asked for the al-Qaeda al members, put the National Council of Resistance of Iran on the foreign terrorist organizations list. And guess what, Mr. Hibish? The al-Qaeda members are still there. No reciprocity. Well, uh, we've got we've got Mujahideen Kalk, anti-Iranian terrorists in Iraq. They want to do an exchange. We haven't agreed to do it because we don't talk to them because we prefer to do what you counsel, which is refuse to discuss, refuse to come to an accommodation, refuse to make an agreement. If you think the Iranians can be bullied or bombed out of their uh, their nuclear enrichment program, or that we can get anywhere in dealing with Iran by refusing to talk to them and just going with confrontation, 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 you're going to be sorely disappointed, and you may drag this country into another armed conflict much, much bigger and much worse than the one we have in Iraq right now. I think it's crazy not <laughs> well, to talk. It's absolutely crazy. Our, our dialogue is going to have to end there, and I appreciate okay. the little hand sign, because that was quick <laughs> and to the point. Thank you very much, Raymond Tanter and Hussein Ibish. All right, thanks so much. Well, a film so